Okay, so let's talk about the disease itself. Who do we see this in? We see this in middle to older aged cats. They can range from 4 to 22 years old, but most of them are older than 8 years. There is no reported breed or gender predilection um, uh, that is implicated in this disease. Some of the clinical signs um, cause owners not to recognize that their cats are sick because the cats actually get more active and they have great appetites. And very often, we're recognizing disease in our cat population as cats that kind of, you know, they're more lethargic and they may decide that they don't want to eat. And these cats are actually the opposite. They're active, they're ravenous, so they appear very healthy and very often owners feel that they're more active than they had been in years. This disease, however, because it's so common, is being diagnosed earlier because very often veterinarians are running routine screening blood work, especially in older cat populations, and picking this disease up earlier. So the population of cats that we're seeing now with this disease are much less affected than they were maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Some of the other clinical signs that we see are weight loss, and this is the most common clinical sign. It usually occurs over months, and very often it's pointed out by somebody who hasn't seen the cat in a while that will come in and say, hey, you know, this cat is really thin. Um, so it takes a while sometimes for owners to notice this. It happens because we have an unregulated excess of thyroid hormone and we have an increased metabolic waste rate. So these guys will get very thin, they get very muscle wasted, their spinal stick out. And again, sometimes it takes some it takes a while for owners to actually notice this as a problem. They like to eat, so they get very hungry. Finicky eaters become good eaters. A lot of times owners think, oh, they're feeling great because they're eating really well. Um, another thing that happens is cats can become very aggressive to get food. So one of the things that a lot of owners will report um, is that all of a sudden the cats are biting their heels in the morning or their behavior is changing. They're becoming very food aggressive. And that can be one of the signals that we see with a hyperthyroid cat because they are using more energy and they're hungry. Don't be fooled. There is a low percentage um, that can have an that can have an appetence and anorexia, anorexia. So as usual, the clinical signs are not always um, uh, exactly the same for everybody, but most of them become polyphagic. They have polyuria and polydipsia. Owners may come in because the litter box is wetter. Usually that's something owners notice. They've got to clean it out more often. And so that's something that they'll notice as a clinical sign. They also might notice that the animal starts drinking from abnormal places. Like all of a sudden it's in the um, sink drinking or it's drinking out of the, the pan uh, underneath the plants. So they may report that as a behavior change. There's probably a couple of reasons why this happens. Um, there may be a decreased ability to concentrate the urine due to increased medullary blood flow and solute washout, and also part of this may be psychogenic. Um, they vomit, and if and that's always something that causes owners to be um, uh, to to be concerned because nobody likes to watch a cat vomit. Uh, they can vomit undigested food because they're bolting their food down and they just throw it right back up. There's also some postulation there's a direct action of the excess thyroid hormone on the chemoreceptor trigger zone that causes them to vomit. You also may have acute gastric distension because they're eating so quickly. And if they're over grooming, they may have hairballs if they're actually vomiting. They may look unkempt. This is not a generalized... Um, uh, endocrine alopecia where they have bilaterally symmetrical hair loss on the flank or on their back but usually they just look unkempt. They may not be grooming well um, or they might be over grooming and causing bald patches. They have diarrhea. This is not usually pipe stream watery diarrhea. We usually see loose bulky stools from malabsorption because of increased fecal fat. And also because of the 
um, excess thyroid hormones, they can have intestinal hypermotility. And actually, sometimes when you palpate them, you can feel kind of ropey intestines, and that's because you have an increase in the um, muscularis layer because of the stimulation for hypermotility in some of these cats with hyperthyroidism. So sometimes you palpate them and you think that they may have um, some kind of an inflammatory bowel disease type syndrome, and actually it's hyperthyroidism. They have behavior changes and they can become quite annoying. They vocalize, they're nervous, they're hyperactive, they're aggressive, and that's why we called this uh, presentation Those Crazy Cats because sometimes they really are crazy. So when you're actually looking at these guys, some of the clinical signs that you might recognize are shivering or tremors. Um, they might be weak and lethargic, although that's less common. They might be heat and stress intolerant. So you may be examining them and they start panting. They may have respiratory distress. And some of the other things that we've seen um, is sudden onset blindness. They may get hypertensive and that may cause retinal detachment. So these guys can present as um, with sudden onset blindness. On physical exam, we often find that they're thin, they're muscle wasted, often having low muscle condition scores like one or two out of three. And sometimes you can palpate a thyroid gland. It can be unilaterally enlarged or bi bilaterally enlarged. We usually describe this as a thyroid slip. So if you're running your fingers down either side of the trachea, you'll feel this little blip as the thyroid gland kind of goes through your fingers, we call it a thyroid slip, and that's evidence of an enlarged thyroid gland. They may have abnormal cardiac auscultation. They can have a gallop rhythm, and this is one of the few diseases in cats that cause that. It is an extra heart sound that actually does sound like a gallop because of the extra intensity of the blood flow into the heart. They can have a cardiac murmur, and actually 50% or more of these cats have cardiac murmurs. They're usually tachycardic. You may hear premature beats, and they may have actually gone into heart failure. And in cats, a lot of times this may present as a pleural effusion rather than pulmonary edema, so you may hear muffled heart sounds. Having said that, cats are really good at disguising heart disease. So if you have any questions about it, it's probably worthwhile to take an x-ray because a lot of times they can have significantly pleural effusion, significant pleural effusion and you won't hear anything abnormal on auscultation. They may be dehydrated. They may have ventroflexion of the neck because of extreme muscle weakness and they may have increased nail growth.